Hello everyone. In today's video, we'll talk about how to deploy machine learning models, right? So we built our model successfully. If you see our uh, you know, uh, previous videos, so we use linear regression and built a model, right? Now, obviously, whatever the linear regression model which I build need to serve the customer's business, right? To serve the customer business, first my model need to be deployed in some environment so that our model can take data from different sources for prediction right so in this video we'll expose our model as a rest api using a flash package which you know we discussed in our last two videos so we'll be using joplib package to export a uh, save our model the reason why we are using joplib package is because i don't want to save my model as a file right so whenever i'm saying right saving a model saving a model as a file so we are obviously saving the coefficients and constants right so when you talk about the linear regression formula y equal to mx plus c we are storing m and c in a file right so because whenever i want to read that file where the coefficients is stored so there will be a deserialized that may decrease the performance i want to store my model as a python object so that it will be faster to read as deserialization is not required right so when i am loading my model the best part about joblib uh, uh, is that you can load your model into a ram your primary memory so that the performance will be faster right so whenever you want to predict right so your model will be stored in a ram so it will be faster so you might have heard about the word serialized and deserialized right so we'll try to understand what are those right <coughs> let's say when i want to write any of my python object like list dictionary tuples data frames numpy so even our machine learning models into a file or a database so what we, what we'll do is we'll convert our python object to byte stream and then we'll write into a file or database or any any other system in fact right so this process we call it as a serialization right and the reverse way right so when i want to read a data from a file or database right so we call it as a deserialization which means we are converting a file into a python object so this conversion usually will take time that's why what we are doing is we are storing our machine learning model as an python object itself using joplib so that the deserialization is <coughs> not required so now we'll jump to a jupyter notebook and we'll see how to you know, export our model as I said, we'll use uh, joblib package. So we need to install like pip install joblib. I already installed it. So if I want to save my model, so there is an option called dump. So this is my model, right? So we fitted it here and I want to save my model with this file right okay got it i need to run this file let me run this so i'm just running from first yeah so now it should work yeah so now if you see here our last model yeah it, the model successfully saved right few seconds back now obviously uh, we exported our model so whenever uh, you know uh, we want to predict we'll import this model you know we'll load this model using joplib and we can start predicting it right so now we'll go to uh, spider we'll start coding here so obviously i need to import my job package i also need to install flask obviously because we are exposing this as api flask or request i need to oops sorry json what's happening yeah import now now we need to 
create a flask object let me save this now I obviously need to load my model using job plate so we use dump to you know save our model now we are using load to load our model right so it should show somewhere here linear model yeah oops my bad right so now i loaded my model in this object called model you can name anything i just given a name model now we'll start writing our uh, code so yeah, my url would be predict and obviously i will be using a post method because i don't want to you know uh, use get because if i use get all my values will be exposed in a url right so let me use post and I'm creating a function. Maybe I'll name it predict. So I'm getting my data and storing it in an event uh, variable. So we discussed this JSON uploads request our data in our previous videos. Please feel free. In case if you don't, you know, see those videos, please go back and visit those videos. So now let me print this event first, right? So I'm running this. Oops. We have to initialize right. this should be double equal to now let me try to run this yes it ran successfully now let's go to postman tool yeah so this is the url and i already have the data so let me copy and paste it here now let me run this okay we got some error let's let's check this okay so we have to return something obviously right so for now let me return one okay it's automatically restarted okay now let me run this yeah so this is how we are getting so our actual values is in the key call values it's a dictionary obviously right so uh, and we are getting our values which we want to predict as a list if you see this right so now let me remove this print now I'll say values is equal to event of values because we know our actual request is present in the values right so obviously right if you see the type this is obviously a list right so but i need to convert this to numpy before i predict it right so what i'll do is i'll convert this to numpy right and 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 before i convert to the numpy so if you if you observe this right this is string right it's coming in a double quotation first i need to convert it to the float right because obviously it's not a string it's a it's, it's a valid number right so I'm using map function map mp dot float and I'm passing my list 
no need to print we know now I'm creating a new variable and I'm converting my list into numpy array right let me save this okay so now we need to reshape this uh, numpy array before we you know uh, predict so why we need to reshape it we'll see we'll try to understand it let me open the jupyter notebook right so what i'll do is maybe x underscore test so i'm taking the first record here right so i'm obviously converting to to list right and now if i say set jp shape obviously shape won't work because it has to be numpy i mean uh, list won't have the shape object yeah so if you see it's 13 comma there is no columns right so usually how how you know uh, this shape should look is right so uh, it should be number of rows by number of columns right so we have 13 columns here right we have only one row obviously we are taking only one record right so let me let me show you this here, right we are taking only one record so it should be 1 comma 13 not 13 comma 1 right so that is the reason why we are uh, reshaping it right so reshape 1 comma minus 1 okay spelling mistake let me see the shape now can you see this now as i said number of rows we have one rows and we have 13 columns number of rows by number of columns right so let's uh, do the same thing here so we equal to read that re shape of 1 comma minus 1 right now we know right so we we loaded our model in an object called model right so i'll say model dot credit which we already know this object right right so let me print what i am getting in the response yeah it's restarting let me run this yeah so now it's successfully predicted we are getting in a list so when i am returning it maybe what i'll do is res of zero simple right now yeah we are restarting it because we did some changes right so now it's running now let me run this yes we got the value now for this values which we are passing right and it predicted the price will be 19 right so if, if you're not uh, you know uh, clear what i'm talking about so please feel free to visit my previous video so that you'll get more clarity right so yeah so now i can give this rest api to anyone so whoever wants to you know uh, apply the predictions on this housing loan house pricing sorry so they can use this rest api i can send this three 13 columns right they can send this 13 columns and they can you know predict the values right so these are the columns which i'm talking about right so okay so now when you see an error here right so you, you see a warning there should be a warning somewhere here maybe let me start it again you should be able to see some warning yeah warning this is a development server do not use this in a production development so flask is used to expose as a rest api right so now i have a rest api 
obviously right so i need some server to deploy my rest api so whatever you are seeing now is a development server right so it is good for uh, you know testing purpose so the the major problem with the flask is it's a blocking function which means you know uh, let's say for our api right so we got 100 request right at a time so it can serve only one request at a time the remaining request will be in a queue and will be processed one by one because as i said flask is a blocking function which means so if you see this function right if i get two requests at a time the first request will block this function because of that the second request cannot use this function right so once the first request is processed successfully then only the second request can make use of it right now if we make this blocking function as a non blocking function then obviously it can serve more than one request right so we have many options to make as a non blocking function so one of the best option we have is a unicorn server so which we'll be discussing in our upcoming videos and also we'll see some complex you know the machine learning deployment using aws in our upcoming videos right so hope you enjoyed this video a lot right so in our next video uh, we'll discuss some quite interesting topics like you know the logistic regression how to derive the equation for the logistic regression right so thanks again thanks for watching this video stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to this channel thank you bye bye